Hey everybody, it's Ben here. Today we're doing wiring. We're going to get the solar panels wired together and then hooked up to the DC breaker in input box. I've got zip ties, I've got stainless steel clips, and I need to do whatever to get these wires up away from the panels. Don't let them flop around, so I'm mostly going to connect them to the frame here. I pretty much got started just by winding up the cables, just uh, taking up the slack coiling them and holding them in place with some of these stainless steel clips. On the far end, I'd use some more of those stainless steel clips to just run the cable along this edge and then up the side. The end of the cable I just held in place with another clip. Right here, this is with the steel. It's extra thick. It's actually a little thicker than the clips designed for, so I had to tap that in place with a hammer. Then I could connect my home run cable and zip tie it, running it along the central pipe. Again, we'll use these cable glands as strain relief and waterproofing. Those will go through two holes in the toolbox, and then we can bring both our positive and negative wires up through here into the toolbox. Here we're pulling the positive through, and once I've got both wires through, then that's going to go to our DC disconnect box here. So the red wire is going to that second DC circuit breaker, and the black negative wire is just going to our uh, negative bus connection to be combined, and I can put the lid back on. After that, uh, making sure the panels are all connected to each other, I can test it out by turning on the second breaker, check over at the solar charge controller and see that I'm making power. Then I can also turn the first breaker on as well and see that I've got a uh, total combined power coming through now. The paint on the trailer is in pretty rough shape, so I'm going to see if I can strip a bunch of it off to uh, at least give it a nice, simple, quick repaint. I hope this doesn't feel like jumping around too much, but I still have a lot to get done on this trailer. Uh, this is an old trailer. I've, I've had this, made use of it for years and years and years, but it's also been sitting in my backyard a long time. And this wire wheel really did a good job overall at uh, getting rid of the loose paint. Uh, there was also lichens growing in a few spots, and the wire wheel did a good job getting rid of those as well. The top piece of sort of this entire back bumper is only held on by welds on either end, and it turns out that's actually what holds all the planks in place. So I'm going to cut those welds, see if I can get the planks out of there to redo them. I'm using a cheapy reciprocating saw, but with Sawzall brand metal cutting blades, and it just slices right through these welds. Then once this back kind of upper bumper piece is disconnected, I can remove it, and this gives me access to all the planks. I, I'm not the one who originally built this trailer. The way it's laid out, the planks were all inserted in. That piece was put in and then welded in place to hold them. Now I can pull the planks out. I can clean them up. Um, I also need to shuffle some of these planks around, add a few more in to finish the decking. I also tried a little bit of this aluminum polish on the truck toolbox. It was pretty dirty, so I thought, what the heck, I'd give it a try. Uh, basically, you just rub it on, wipe it off, and then uh, you can see all the dirt that uh, you pulled off right here on the back of the towel. On the, uh, the flat parts, uh, this polish did a really nice job. Looks a hundred times shinier, but there's still a lot of dirt right around the edge of this tread. Might need like a toothbrush or something to get in there, but boy, that part looks real nice and shiny. To continue painting, there's a few things I had to get out of the way, such as the side marker light. I just popped off the amber lens, pulled out the screws, and then I could get it out of the way. Once everything was out of the way, including the planks, I pretty much primed the entire trailer. I was using Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer, which uh, really does a pretty good job just going straight over the top of everything. I know there's nothing quite so fun as watching paint dry, except for the fact that uh, one thing I really like about this particular primer is that it really does dry fast. You can literally watch it dry. I removed the taillights before priming the back end of the trailer and the other side. After priming, I went through and painted everything black. And then it was time to reinstall the taillights. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with taillights is nearly all trailer taillights 
um, actually complete the electrical path for the lighting circuit through the body of the trailer. Um, typically it's just these bolts are grounded to the frame and since this is painted it's not necessarily conductive. So usually these come with uh, something like these star washers right here and by putting the nut on and tightening it down that star washer bites right through paint or anything else that would uh, resist the electrical connection. So I put these on, tighten those down, and that way the lights will work. Over on the right side of the trailer, uh, this light's a little beaten up. It's got a crack, missing lens, missing bulb. So I'm just gonna replace that. It was like 10 bucks for a new light, brand new. These things are mass manufactured. So basically even between all the different brands, they look pretty much identical. I'll use some of these crimp-on solderless connectors, and because this is for outdoor equipment, I'll use these ones that have the heat shrink uh, built right onto them. On the old light, I'm just going to cut those wires. Cut this thing right off. Leaving me with a green wire and a brown wire. Strip those ends. And then I just got to splice these together, green to green, brown to brown. I crimped the wires together with some of these solderless butt splice connectors and those have heat shrink built right in so once these were crimped I just used my heat gun to shrink that tube. After that it's time to reinstall the light and tighten the nuts down nice and tight so that it makes that electrical bond to ground. After that, I tested the lights just by plugging my car into the trailer wiring harness, turning my four-way flashers on, and also my headlights on and off. That way I can test uh, all the filaments of the bulbs as well as those side marker lights. Getting back to the planks, they were really gray, weathered, ugly, had some lichens on there. They really needed to be cleaned up. So one way I thought I could do it is I had some uh, deck cleaner around and a five gallon bucket going to my Ryobi 18 volt pressure washer. Uh, it's just a little battery operated thing, but it does a pretty good job of stripping all the ugly off of these planks here. The trouble with it is it's, it's kind of tedious. It only does a very small area at a time. Looks good. You can see on the right the area that I cleaned. On the left is what it looked like. Uh, it's just, it took a long while to do that. So I think I'm gonna end up sanding this. So now let's do some grounding. Now keep in mind grounding can mean a couple different things. We're talking about equipment grounding here. Uh, we're going to use some of these ground screws, this grounding point, and some plain copper wire to bond together pretty much anything metal. Uh, equipment frames, enclosures, everything like that, including the solar panel frames themselves. So I'll use a little, uh, just some rigid copper wire here, mount it to this hole, uh, bond it electrically, and take it down to all the other panels. The first thing is just to make a loop in the end of the copper wire, then put a green grounding screw through it into the hole of the frame. Then I'll just take the wire, fish it through, tuck it inside the frame, take it down to the next solar panel. Then again, same thing, I'm just gonna pop one of those screws in there, not all the way down though. That way I can just wrap the copper wire around it and then tighten it down the rest of the way. Once again, same thing, put the screw in, wrap the wire around it, tighten it down. Now, because I have to go up the side of the frame here, I'm going right past another ground point, so I thought, uh, why not just use that? Mostly just to help hold the wire in place. Up at the top here, what I'm doing is connecting a flexible green wire. The reason why is because the solar panels are going to rotate, and I want the flexible wire to take that up instead of uh, bending that stiff wire over and over. Uh, the connector I used also allows me to ground to the steel section of the frame right here as well. After that, it's just kind of a little bit of wire management, having the ground wire follow my uh, positive and negative solar panel wires. And I probably could have just bonded it straight to the upright there, but I decided instead to take it all the way back to the junction box, straight to that ground bus bar. I disconnected the battery and turned off all other sources of power so I can go safely into the junction box, and I'm just bringing all my grounds together, and I'm gonna, down in the corner we got a little bus bar specifically for the grounds. Just uh, connect everything right in there.
There's also a ground screw on the back of the inverter, so I'm going to put an eye on the end of a piece of green wire. I'm going to run it up to the bare metal of the toolbox. I'm also going to run it up to the lid of the toolbox with some slack so this can open and close. Because since this is, the, this is on a hinge, it's not really guaranteed that it's got a good ground. And then back over to our junction box. Okay, everything's officially grounded. Uh, right here down on the back of the UPS I'm using as the inverter. It's got the ground screw here. That's coming up to the truck toolbox. Jumpering over to the lid of the toolbox. Just make sure this can still open and close. Yep, got the right amount of wire there. And then that ground also comes over and goes into our junction box. All of my grounds come together right down here on that ground bus bar and everything else, charge controller, um, even anything metal inside this box, truck box, uh, all the solar panels have a ground wire running across and that also comes all the way up over to here. So it looks like we are grounded. I'm gonna just label a few things here. Getting back to the planks, I decided that uh, the way to go was with the belt sander. I was able to clean a pretty good size area pretty quickly with the sander. The other thing is I liked the overall look of it. It sort of uh, cleaned the planks but still gave them sort of a rustic look. Uh, as opposed to the pressure washer, uh, really gave a different look to this almost uh, too clean, if I can say it like that. Uh, part of this project was just reusing materials and I liked how this looked sanded. You'll notice here that the toolbox is actually lifted off the deck by a little bit and I have it supported by a 2x4 going across to the side rails. What that does is it gives me the room that I need to be able to slide the planks back in underneath it. With the planks in place, I can lower the back end of the toolbox back onto them. Before I bolt this down, I want to make sure the toolbox is in exactly the right place because the solar panels get really close when they swing by. So I wanted to test from a couple different angles to make sure it's good. There's a metal cross member right here under the back of the toolbox and it also runs pretty much straight under the battery. So I thought what I'd do is I would take advantage of this as a place to bolt down the back end of the toolbox. I would take some measurements here uh, cut a three-quarter inch piece of plywood to a little bigger than the battery. Then I could put a bolt through that uh, piece of wood, down through the box, the planking, that metal cross member, and put a bolt in place. Uh, then I would be able to use some wood screws to mount down the battery to that piece of wood. I made some marks on a recycled piece of lumber and cut it to length. Then I just popped it right down into the battery box and drilled some eighth inch holes and then I left that long bit poking through so I could find it from the bottom. It's now down under the trailer. Sure enough, easy to spot right there because we've got the bit sticking through. And it looks like that came out in a pretty good spot. Then I'll just drill out a three eighths hole, put a three eighths carriage bolt through there. I drilled out those eighth inch holes to three eighths and put carriage bolts through there, putting a nut and a washer on the bottom and tightening those down. After that, I put the battery back in place. I'm not showing that because that was really awkward. It was hard to do and film at the same time, but I put the battery in there. It already had a couple of uh, loops on it where basically I could put through some uh, heavy wood screws to hold the battery down directly onto this wood plank. One thing I like about this design of trailer is not only can I see straight out my rear window, but uh, also any vehicles behind me can see the turn signals, the brake lights on the car instead of just the trailer. 
after plugging the battery back in, I was pretty much good to go, other than being a few planks short of a full pirate ship. I'd have to scrounge up some more uh, scrap wood to finish filling in the deck, but I was able to take the trailer out to a local sustainability event and show it off. We'll talk about that and more next time right here. Please subscribe so that you make sure to see that video as soon as it comes out. I'd love it if you'd share these videos, tell your friends, and until next time, stay charged up.